Welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where John and I are going to be speaking with Bill Jordan. Uh, John? John? Uh, excuse me. Uh, Sorry about that. I'm used to it. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Don't take it personally. I'm used to it. Yeah, but on the radio, on the radio, you never could tell about your audience. Oh, I had a definite, I had a definite vibe. Believe me, they're nodding yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, interestingly enough for me, uh, yawning does not mean uh, that I'm tired. I just sometimes I get uh, oxygen or something, and I have to yawn. Exactly. It's but nice. on the opposite side of the coin, I am a napper. I inherited the what I consider a gift from my father to be able to nap anywhere, anytime, not quite for as long as I'd like, but sometimes I can actually control it. So all through my career, if I had some downtime between shows or whatever else, I would find a quiet place. I'd sit in a chair, I'd lie down on a bench, whatever it is, I, I'd, I'd nap. I'd take a mm -hmm. nap for 15 minutes, a half hour, almost became a joke. People thought I was dead at one point. <laughs> They walked into the conference room and I was laying on the table. And you wake, them, and wake them up with paddles, right? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, he, he, I, I can nap. I still nap. Um, and I find that my napping has taken a different pathway. Instead of napping when I want to be as a, as a form of relaxation in between jobs or uh, slow periods or whatever, now that I'm retired, I find that I really want an afternoon nap. I have lunch. Um, I, I sit on the porch. And that, the best time is the summer. Sit on the porch, sunshine coming in, and just the warmth. And you put your head down and you breathe shallowly. And, oh, man. I, and, and my naps now last longer. So they're always in the afternoon after lunch. And they always last longer. That's. Do you guys nap? Have you ever napped? Are you nappers? I was a professional napper when I did morning radio. I, I would, uh, some guys would do morning radio and then they'd go to bed at 8 p.m., right? So that they got a solid block of sleep before work the next day. I always came home and, like I say, I'd, I'd eat lunch and then that food hits you, you're tired, and I'd go to bed. I wasn't one of these guys that, you know, I'm sleeping in my chair today. Uh, I'd go to bed for an hour and a half to two hours, sometimes longer if I'd, and I'd set an alarm. And other guys I talk to, I, I can't I can't nap longer than 20 minutes or I'm just in a mental fog. It's like, well, I, I get the mental fog. I come out of it. But yeah. it allowed me to stay awake through primetime TV because I'd have to talk about primetime TV. Plus, well, my, I my napping has actually changed. I used to be like John. I could nap. Uh, and in fact, my my uh, at least my oldest daughter, uh, but I think both my other two kids as well could almost nap at will. When I, I remember uh, the, the famous uh, uh, thing about me is that when I was in the, in the military and we would be going down a, a dusty road and a, a bumpy road and I could put my head on the back of the tailgate and fall asleep and then wake up at the other end. So I could nap at any time. However, uh, as I've gotten older, what I found is that I can nap, but I can only nap if I crawl under the covers because otherwise I'm so busy doing so many things uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working with websites and planning these shows and so on and yeah. so forth. My mind is constantly awake. And so unless I crawl under the covers, literally, and, and yep. pull them up over me and put my head down on the pillow, I find it pretty hard to, to just fall asleep on command anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I don't have a set nap every day, but when I do nap, I nap hard. And the best naps are those ones that when you wake up, it's like it's not like you're waking up. It's like you're actually coming to from a you're unconscious, <laughs> you know, and yeah. you got to go, OK, I'm in my chair. I'm in my house. I mean, it's those kinds of naps where you really dream. Those are really, really good. And I try. I love those naps that just happen. They just you're watching TV or something. The next thing you know, your head's like this and you're drooling down your shirt. Those are the best. <laughs> But my wife got me this because, uh, you know, you get that crick in your neck and you got to move in slow motion to kind of straighten your head. Yes, yes. She got me this horseshoe kind of, I guess it's kind of like what they have in airplanes and it, and it wraps around your neck, but it holds your head up a little bit. Like oh, sure. Yeah. And if I put that on, I even use it to watch television at night. Um, but I put that thing on if I feel a nap coming on or that I know one's coming on yeah. and I'm out, I can be out still an hour in my chair, hour and a half, depending. 
Um, I, it's funny, you know, I, I look at our granddaughter, two years old, hey, you know, you know, Ruby, it's time for a nap. No, it's like, what's wrong with you, child? Yeah. You should, one day you will embrace that nap. You will like, oh, oh yeah. Yes, good stuff. Yeah. But the, at what time in your life does that does that finally you go, okay, I, I get it now. I get it. Sleep is sleep is my friend. Yep. So yeah, I, have I, a part of, I have a question to ask you. With that that uh, horse collar thing you have around your neck when you fall asleep on a couch, did you ever like fall asleep and then wake up in the Netherlands? You know, did you ever fall asleep on your couch and then wake up and you were in the Netherlands or or uh, Monaco or, or someplace? No. Oh, you didn't. Okay. Just check them. Because yeah, you yeah. use it for an airplane. So, okay. No, no, no. I understand what you're saying, but no, yeah. I've never done that. Um, oh, okay. I've fallen asleep in doctor's offices, though. Um, yeah. I don't think I ever fell asleep at work. I wanted to. Um, you, but couldn't, I didn't. you couldn't do a three minute nap during a, a, a playing a record or something like that? Did you? Never did it. No. Never did it, and even do it all nights. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. Now we've had a guy fall asleep uh, while he was on the air. In fact, the first first station I worked at in Petersburg, Virginia, little thousand watt radio station, and he was on overnight. And this is back when we had albums and 45s, and right. you know, played off of disc. And uh, police, Petersburg police, uh, called our program director and said they think something had happened at the radio station. Because all they heard was the <laughs> of the needle at the end of the groove, right? Needle going and around, yeah. Program director grabbed his 38 revolver, went down to the bank building, went upstairs and found our uh, disc jockey asleep on the toilet. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> just, just like this. Yeah. So, you know, it has happened. <laughs> oh, but not to you. Not well, the wonderful thing is that as you grow older, napping is kind of a regular thing, and we all ought to enjoy it. Yeah. Take it, advantage of it. It's regular. We should enjoy it. And not only that, at our age, it is expected of us. Right. And yes. I try not to disappoint people. Yeah. yeah also, yeah. I would think that uh, a lot of people looking at us at, uh, you know, over the age of uh, 50 and uh, wonder if we're not sleeping with our eyes open anyway. So, you yeah, might. <laughs> you might as well get a real nap out of it. That's it. But in the meantime, okay, whether you're napping or not, when you wake up, you should That's embrace right. the boom. Gotta Live embrace your the life, boom. forget your age, and embrace the boom. There you go. Thanks, guys. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.